want to have in your now it's time for SEO and you SEO and you what we want to do is we want your websites to rank remember as we talked earlier your IDX site is great if it ranks high yet it's not necessarily the best website depending on your platform to make rank high Yet, if you've gone through any of our other classes or as you come through our other classes, we are going to teach you other websites you need and want to have in your portfolio. And because of that, you will find yourself using other sites to drive traffic to your IDX. Well, how do you make those sites grow? Well, first and foremost, we told you content is king. Go back to the 10 tips of Google Panda and make sure your content is the best. Make sure your grammar, your spelling, make sure your formatting all looks good. Make sure it's all smooth, all clean. And then at the same time, make sure the information is valuable. Make sure you're becoming a source and a resource. And make sure people are wanting to bookmark, share, recommend the stuff that you're writing and that your content is original content not duplicate i've seen too many people already ask the question today and type it in and say well how do i take it that i put it here and i put it there simple answer you don't don't create duplicate content create original content the next thing that Google is looking at is the age of site. We talked about this before. Go register your website domain names as soon as possible. Get the clock started and get content on the domain. No, that doesn't mean go buy a domain name and just forward it somewhere else. You're going to want to get age on the sites. Why? Because spam sites don't stick around. Spam sites create, steal the money, and leave. Sites that stay for a long time are sites that obviously are wise. The big tree in the forest is the one that gets all the sunlight. It's the one that gets everybody to notice it, and it's because it's been there and it grows, not the little sapling that comes and goes and doesn't make it through the season. Size of your site matters. Again, the big tree is the one that gets noticed. Why? Not only because it's been there long, because it's big. Because it's big. More pages on your site is better. Make sure you've got lots and lots and lots of pages and your site size keeps growing. A good way to do that, log... Now, when you do it, do not use a subdomain like blog.yourname.com. That's not helping your website. That's another domain completely in the eyes of Google. You should have yourname.com slash blog1, yourname.com slash blog2, yourname.com slash blog3. Now, yourname.com has a lot of pages growing on it. Does that make sense? And folks, yourname.com is already taken. I wasn't meaning to go get that one. That was a you fill in the blank with yourname.com. The title of the site matters. One, it should be specific. So where are we going to get the specific title to my site? And by that we mean the page of every site. So it's not yourname.com slash blog1, it's yourname.com slash specific title, yourname.com slash specific title2, specific title3. Where do we get it? Right, we go back to what we just figured out on our keyword phrase using the long tail. You are brilliant. You are catching on to this stuff. Number two is it should be under 70 characters long. More than 70 characters, you're writing too much for your title. Three, each page, unique. So don't give me Bellingham Waterfront Homes and then give me another page that's Bellingham Waterfront Homes. One title and one keyword phrase per page of 
your site. And four, as I told you, be geographically specific. Don't be generic. Don't tell me waterfront homes. Where? Google doesn't know where. I don't know where. And if I end up on your site and you were talking Florida and I'm in Washington, I'm leaving your website immediately. Next, links. We talked about links already, didn't we? We talked about Google Penguin beating up the links and how to go create some links. And we're going to talk more and more and more through all of our classes on how to create great links for your website. It is key in the eyes of Google. Now, how do you apply this to your site? Because someone's saying, hey, this stuff's not easy. No, you're right. It's not easy. If it were easy, everybody would do it. It's simple. It's not easy. You've got to really work at this stuff. So how would I apply this to my site? Well, anywhere that I can customize on my page, I would. I would get in there and I would add the keyword that I wanted to target this page for, whatever that keyword was going to be. I would start today. So the age of my site is born now and it's starting to grow in the eyes of Google so that it'll get me a greater return over the years. Folks, if you have a company that's provided you with a website, guess what? The content on yours is the same as the content on everyone else's. There's another word for that and it's duplicate content. So only the person that got the first website has the original information out there. What kind of stuff could you put? If you went to target one of the pages so that you were different from everybody else, what kind of stuff could you put on your page? Bruce you could use neighborhood pages, absolutely. You could use pages about your bio, absolutely. You could use pages with interesting information about events that go on in your area. Absolutely. Make sure you're customizing each and every page. You want to make sure that your pages go viral. Now, we talked about this even back in YouTube about how hard it is to make a video go viral and it's 1% of 1% of all the videos go viral. So how are you going to make your blog, your page, your website go viral? What are you going to ask? If you do all these steps we've been talking about, Google's going to start pushing you up the ranking. And the higher you are, the more often people see you. The more often people see you, the more often people read your information if you've got good content. The more often they read your information, the higher Google's going to keep ranking you. So as you play this game of SEO, which is not easy, play the game right. And this doesn't mean go post everything about your website on Facebook because you think that's going to make it go viral. Before you do that, go check out our social classes on Facebook before we all unfriend you for being that person. Now, do you want to know how many pages of your site are indexed? If you want to know how many pages of your site are indexed, look at what we've got on the screen there because I'm going to get emails from all of you saying, wait, I got that wrong. I don't understand. You type this exactly. Site colon www.yoursite.com if it is, dot net, whatever. Then you type your site again. And you will see right there, Google found 247 results on our page. That means our site has 247 pages that are being indexed by Google. Now you can get an idea of the size of your site. It's right there on the screen. It'll be in the handout for you for homework. Site colon www.website website. And that's going to help you figure all of that out. Now, how do you submit your site to Google? Because I get this all the time from people. Well, I did my site. I, I did my blog. I did this stuff, and I want to submit it to Google. How do I submit it to Google? You don't. They come to you. 
You don't get to go to them. You need to make sure that you're just doing what you're doing and Google will find you. Now, if you use certain sites like Active Rain that we mentioned earlier and we'll talk about in a few calls on the value of Active Rain, if you're using a site like that, it gets indexed by Google. Remember, the spiders, the folders, it gets indexed every 15 minutes by Google, which means if you go create something new within 15 minutes, Google will have seen it. If you use your own site, I don't know how often Google's going to be indexing it to know when they're going to get back and update. Now, for those of you who are extreme users and you're ready to take this next step, you can listen. For those of you whose head already hurts, I want you to sing something right now so that you can't hear me because I'm just going to talk and it's going to make you hurt. Because those of you who are ready to move this on, go make sure you have added the Google Webmaster Tools to your site. It's going to show you what pages on your site get the most inbound links. It's going to show you the keywords you're ranking for and the ones that drive the most traffic to you. It's going to show you common keywords on your site. It's going to show you crawling errors that are happening out there, like 404 errors. It's going to show you duplicate page titles and duplicate meta tag descriptions. It's going to show you if your site is being penalized in Google and some of the things that you need to do about your site. Google Webmaster Tools are not simple. They're not easy. They're not something we're going to walk you through. When you're ready to take on those, you're going to want to go and follow the Google videos. If this stuff has already got your head spinning, don't even think about adding in the Webmaster Tools it will just hurt. And if you want to do it, just go Google, Google Webmaster Tools. It'll take you right to it. All right, gang, we're going to give you some homework. Chris, throw them up that link again for those that want to get it. It's right there in your chat box. Chris is going to put the link up if you don't want to go to the website to find the homework at the end of this. We're going to want you to write five top ten keyword phrases. We give you examples. Seattle real estate, Atlanta real estate, Phoenix real estate, real common terms you don't want to bother with. Then I want you to write five common keyword phrases. This is where you get a little more specific. These are the areas that you probably wouldn't know if you weren't looking to move into the area or live there already. Now you're getting into those common phrases. Then we want you to write five less common keyword phrases. That's where we're going to start adding in a specific attribute, like the waterfront homes, gourmet kitchens, new construction, whatever the terms are you want to add to your geography-based term. And then one specific keyword. And I had somebody say, is a property address too specific? It is. It's very specific. It might get you one hit. Yet if someone was looking for that property address, do you think there's a reason? And you might want that one hit. Or maybe it's a property address like it's a condo community that's addressed, you know, 1212 Main Street condos or something like that. You're working that address very much. That's very, very, very specific. We want you to optimize your real estate website. Add some of those common keyword phrases to your home page or your about me page, your seller page, your community serve page, whatever it is on your websites that you've got. We don't know what website you're using depending on your brokerage. You've probably been given something or maybe you built your own. Use these tools. Also do the same thing behind the scenes. Come up with your meta descriptions. Just know that Google's not weighting them too heavy. Your image names. Stop naming your images. IMG43824.jpg, because no one's Googling it. Go create the correct name for your images, etc., etc. Open mic time. And the question I often get asked here is, who can I hire to do this? You shouldn't, is my answer. I always get, who can I hire to do this, Chad? That sounded overwhelming. There was so much stuff you were talking about. You're right, there was. The people who are doing it for you are doing things that you can do simply as you now learned. They're just charging you a lot of money to do it. 
If you're blogging correctly, we'll cover that. If you're using outside traffic correctly, we're going to cover that on next week's call. If you're using the paid advertising, you're going to start generating the traffic that you want.